when we're talking about the Torah, the, the, the laws, the codes that are being given out, there are other commandments that go past the Torah. And so when we talk about the law, sometimes in the New Testament, we're talking about the entirety of the Old Testament and they counted up these commandments. There's different numbers for different lists, but the most famous one is this commandment list of 613. And in these 613 commandments, there are, there are commandments that are found in Proverbs. There are commandments that are found in Psalms. There are commandments that are found in Isaiah. There are commandments that are found in Amos. There are commandments that are found all over the prophets. And so each one of these schools has their pet commandment that they like the best. We are, we are becoming no strangers to debate. We're becoming no strangers to vicious, vitriolic debate and people saying really mean things about each other and people having really strong opinions about things and people being scared to say things and maybe you have been scared to say something that you thought you should say recently. Hey, I'll raise my hand in that boat also, okay? And that's kind of the, the, the soup that this guy wants to throw Jesus in. We have a section here that is uh, sort of based on some questions from a not very good place. Some questions that aren't trying to seek knowledge, they're trying to trip up Jesus. But these questions are answered, and they're answered well. We've talked about this before. Most people your age, uh, they've done surveys in the past couple years. Most people your age that don't want anything to do with a church service, that wouldn't set foot in a place like this ever again. One of, the, one of the number one reasons why they do that, why maybe some of us in this room, including myself, have done that before, is because I did not feel like, they did not feel like their questions were adequately answered here. They did not feel like that there was a place where they could have contemplative, fruitful discussion about the things that they were going through, yes, but about just issues that they had with things that they have heard and trying to reconcile with their experience. I submit that we love the Lord our God with all our mind by recognizing that our faith is never meant to be separated from our intellect. That there is not a question, that there is not a conversation, that there is not an issue that God cannot deal with. And we want this place to be that for you. We want this to be a place where we love the Lord our God with our mind. Where we are able to struggle and think and pray and live through things that on a normal everyday basis would be impossible. Um, the past couple months, it's been, uh, well, it's been a little weird for me, and especially the past couple weeks, um, because, you know, God's always preparing you for things, but recently, I mean, he's been like kind of nailing it into me that mm. I need to be the person I'm supposed to be, you know? Yeah. Um, God's even thrown me into some situations recently. I mean, you know, I'm being tested in some ways, um, which is another thing. I've been reading Job recently, mm. which really helps me. Um, but I'm not really like, I'm affected by it, of course, my situation right now, but it's not really affecting my mood that much, mm. which is strange to me because usually anytime that I have any problems, you know, my first thought is, oh God, why? Mm. You know, kind of like blaming him and targeting him. But recently it's just, I don't see it as very negative. I mean, the situation, of course, is negative, but I'm able yep. to still find joy in the miserableness of it. Mm. And I've never had that experience before. So recently it's been really encouraging for me. Yeah, and I think that's a, a big thing of like, I remember even when all the stuff was happening with my mom and she had passed away and all that kind of stuff. Just to know that I can find hope in Christ was, was so big like during that moment and stuff. And even though all those external things were in my life and um, it was just really hard and stuff, that I could go to sleep well at night knowing that, you know, like the Lord loves me and he cares for me. And because of that, I can continue to trust in him um, and stuff, and if I've seen him work in the past, I, I know that he's gonna work in the future. Um, so even though these pressing things, even though this stuff is really hard right now, it doesn't compare to what God's gonna do in the future and what he's actually doing in this moment right now too. Um, so, so yeah, I think, I think that's good. But um, for me, um, 
I don't know. There's there's just a, a lot of stuff that I got out of it. Um, but um, strangely, well, not strangely, but um, I think it was pretty cool. Something that Logan uh, had talked about. Um, she said in the sense of like marriage and what that means and like all that kind of stuff. I think it, it might be really big for me because I'm going through marriage counseling with Hannah right now and stuff, which is amazing. But uh, but she said, you're not always going to feel in love, but act. Uh, but basically you're going to be able to act in it uh, because after you do those actions, the feelings follow um, because of like the action and because of the heart behind it and stuff. And I think that's uh, the biggest thing of knowing how we are with Christ and stuff. Like sometimes, honestly, like I f don't feel like I'm that close to God um, and stuff. And sometimes I don't feel like I can come to, to God with my, my, my questions or my concerns or anything like that. But in the action of me coming to him um, shows that I love him. And because, because I love him, those feelings will follow afterwards and stuff. And, um, I think that's a big thing. Uh, I think that if people were to to see that more and following that more, that they would be able to see that the Bible does have all the answers that they need, no matter if it's something big or if it's something small, where it's super intellectual or it's something simple. Um, I think coming to the Lord with our questions, coming to the throne room of God um, in a confident way because of how He loves us um, is a huge thing. Um, and I think it's something that um, that I really need to to see more and something I need to share with, more with other people as well. What does, and this is loaded, but what does loving other people look like in a, in a Christian world? Yeah, so I'm going to, you, you, you might not like it when I do this, but I'm going to use Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I just don't like the terrible movie with Tom Hanks about Mr. Well, Rogers. okay, fine. Okay. Real life Mr. Rogers one time when he was accepting an award, and they did this in the movie. It's part of the movie that you dislike the most, so that's what, that's why I mentioned it. Um, he takes some time out of his acceptance speech to say to people, I want, I'm going to give you 10 seconds, and he thinks they're, they think he's joking at first, but then he looks at his watch. He's like, I'm going to watch the clock. I'm going to give you just 10 seconds. Think about the people, and here's how he uses the phrase, who loved you into being which has stuck with me since I heard it and so I think the way that we love people into being not that we create people but right. <laughs> that the way but that certainly our everyday actions there, have influences on people are loved into a relationship with Christ all the time by Absolutely. people who are who love God and so I think that's majorly what we do that they see us as a source of God's presence on the earth in a real way in ways that they don't see other places it's not by the uh, virtuosity of our arguments it's not by the heavy handedness of our doctrine or our theology it's because they see us as, as as fountains of god's love and that's where christianity is really scary for me because that's a massive weight of it feels to me like a massive weight of responsibility of i have to be that person in other people's lives if i'm not living out a lifestyle that that other people could say that about me, then am I fulfilling my obligations yeah. as a Christian? Well, and, and the intention wasn't for us to think about it legalistically. Right. It's, the, it's actually the exact opposite because the, the guy who's asking the question is thinking about it legalistically. What's the most important one? Because I want to make sure I'm doing that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> but here's where all they're all contained. If you're doing this, all the rest of, the, right. of everything you need to know is going to be is going to be taken care of. And so I think that is um, goading us to be better but it's also freeing us to be able to say look this is what god has done in my life this is what he has me doing in the world and as much as i can do that that's what my passion desire leaning is supposed to be towards and that's what it looks like to love god and that's going to cause me to love people in 2006 there was a guy uh named uh bao shishun You've all heard of him, right? Bao Shi Shun, you know. My boy. Um, he was the tallest guy in the world. It's not Yao Ming. He's from Mongolia. Tallest guy in the world. He was about uh, eight feet tall. I think he was actually like seven, nine. But I mean, they always, those guys round up. They round up. He lived a few miles away from an aquarium. This aquarium had two dolphins. And 
one day they didn't get all the toys out of the dolphins uh, little play area. Usually they would take the, they would play with them and then they'd take the toys out so they weren't with them all night. And so the, the dolphins were with the toys all night and they swallowed. I mean, dolphins are supposed to be like second smartest next to us, but they swallowed these plastic toys and they were dying. The dolphins, two dolphins were dying. And so they tried everything by, by modern means that they could. They tried all the mechanical devices they had to get down into the dolphin's digestive system. They're, the only thing that they could think of was we're about to have to cut them open and that's probably going to kill them anyway. And so one guy that was there said, hey, I know this guy, <laughs> you know, he's got four foot long arms. <laughs> Why don't we just see if we, if we can get him down here and if he can just reach his arm into, into the mouth of the dolphin and see if he can reach it. Dolphins are like six feet long, by the way, if you've ever been to SeaWorld. And so what they did was they put towels around the dolphin's teeth, and Bao Shishun put his hand all the way down a dolphin, both of them, and got the toys out. They, they, there were biologists there. They couldn't, they're like, I have, we've built tools for this for the past 50 years, and nothing is, nothing is helping. They called a guy that lived miles away. It just happened. They're like, you know what? Hey, the tallest man in the world is like, <laughs> it's like right there. <laughs> How often do you think he gets asked to do crazy things, by the way? <laughs> he just stuck his arm down a dolphin. But they saved the dolphins. It's, a, it's not a sad story. The dolphins, I mean, everybody calm down. The dolphins made it. Because he was made that way. Somebody knew about it because they had seen him out in the world and knew exactly what he was made for when the situation came about. That's us. We're made for relationship with God. We're made for relationship with other people. Oh, may we all know the joy of someone saying, hey, You know all about this God stuff. I'm going through something right now. I see the way that you deal. I see the way that your community gathers around you. I see the way that God works in your life and uses you to work in other people's lives. Help. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams, but it's not just that we make music, it's not just that we dream, it's that there's a reality that's changed because of who we are.